everyone hope you're doing very well so today we're going to look at VFR approach and landing VFR means visual flight rules it means we've got good visual conditions where we can see the runway down there and we can land with normal VFR technique so first of all we need to approach so we're going to dive down from our flight level down to just above 1500 AGL feet and a speed down to between 250 and 300 knots as we approach the airfield for our initial. The first check that we need to do is our fuel balance. So we're going to go over to our fuel gauge here and check that we are within balance limits. We can tell that we are. If these needles were more divergent and there was a red tag available, then we would have to do something about it. And we've got that covered in our fuel management video. Next, landing lights. So we're going to check it's in the up position for landing. Just check it is. It is. Next, we're going to check our barometric altimeter. Several checks we need to do. First, we need to check that our reading here is the same as reading on our hards, which is 7400, and we've got 7400 there. Next, we need to check that our electrical and the pneumatic variations of this altimeter are within limits. So we're just going to level out quickly. Left click electric, right click pneumatic, and we're just about within 75 feet limit there. Next, we're going to set our QFE. We would have contacted the runway, uh, the ATC, sorry, to get QFE, but we're not doing comms today. And the QFE should be 29.92 for this airfield. Essentially, it's going to zero us to the airfield or very close to it. Next, we have to do our pre-landing attitude references. We have to make sure that everything is agreed. Our ADI, make sure that is matching with our S, with our secondary, and make sure that is matching with our HUD. Just a basic check before landing. Next is our anti-ice switch. We just need to set it as desired for the conditions and we're in auto at the moment and that's fine. So we're gonna work our way down to speed for our initial. We're now on the initial to the runway. So we're two or three miles out from the runway, about 2,000 feet, just over 300 knots. We're gonna be in line with the runway and we're gonna break left over the runway into a left-hand circuit. The circuit speed is gonna be 300 to 350 KIAS at 1500 feet AGL. We're going to break over the runway and our break is going to be a 60 degree roll to the left in this case and we're going to use that turn to bleed off some of our speed down to downwind speed. So the break will be left like that, our downwind will be coming back against the runway like that, on our downwind will be 180 to 210 KIAS at circuit altitude. Along the downwind we'll put our gear out and air brake as required. Once we've passed the threshold and extended as required, and you can extend as far as you want, you can extend no miles, or two miles, three miles, four miles, it's up to you. We'll do about two miles for this video, so we've got some time to talk. Once we've reached the end of our threshold extension, we'll turn left into a 180 degree base turn. It's important during this base turn that we end in line with the runway for our final, and our altitude at the end of the base turn wants to be approximately 300 feet times the length of the threshold extension. So if we've extended two miles, so we've got a two mile final, then we want to be 600 feet AGL at the end of the base turn. So it's a diving base turn. At that point, we begin our final and I'll pause it at that point and we'll go through the necessary steps for the final. A quick look at instrumentation. We're going to be using calibrated airspeed, our barometric altimeter that we've zeroed, our pitch ladder, and there will be extra accuracy of pitch ladder when we get slower and gear out. Our path marker here, the big circle, our ball sight cross here. We'll also be using two instruments for angle of attack measurement, but we'll worry about that once we're on the final. So, stand by. From the initial, we're going to do approach the runway, get down to our circuit altitude of 1500 and about 300 knots or just above. And of course in the break. Cap braking, give my path marker on the horizon, 60 degree roll. Maintain circuit altitude. Once we're below 250 knots, gear can come out. Get down. Level out for the downwind. Down to 180 to 210 knots. Slightly skewed here, so I'm just going to correct. Okay, reports tricking base. Well, I'm past the threshold now. I'm doing my extension of a couple of miles.
Okay, got phase Good turn. Roger. So I want to finish this phase turn in line with the runway, two miles out from the threshold at 600 feet, 300 feet per mile. And I can start losing speed now as well. Constantly checking the location of the runway to ensure that I am my turn in line. With the runway. Okay, I'll say I'm going to pause there. So we've got to our final. I've made a bit of an error. I'm supposed to be really 600 feet at this point. I'm over at 950, but I think I can compensate for that. I don't think I'm too far out that I can't compensate. So it's important that we get on speed now. That means I get my speed so that we're on the correct angle of attack for landing. It's about 13 degrees. That means two things. We want our path marker here to be within our, in our angle of attack error bracket here, ideally in the center if we can. And our angle of attack indexer, which is currently showing our angle of attack too low here, and if we had a chevron up here, our angle of attack would be too high there. We want it to be centralized as a circle. That shows we're on our 13, or I think it's 11 to 13 degrees angle of attack. And that's how we want to hold it until landing. So regards speed, you just want to make sure we're on speed for that angle of attack. We also want to ensure that our 2.5 degree pitch dive line here is leveled with the threshold of the runway. You can see that it's slightly above at the moment, and that's because I've ended my base turn too high. I've misjudged my base turn. As well as that, once we are about to touch down, we are going to do a small flare in the pitch to reduce sink rate for the touchdown. Once we're touched down, we're going to maintain our angle of attack of about 13 degrees. Careful not to pull too hard aft stick because if we get above 15 degrees, we'll probably tail strike. The reason we do that is to aero brake because we just don't have the brakes. Once we've run out of lift, the nose will dive at about 100 knots. At that point, we can feed in full aft stick to get max stabilator deflection, which will act as further aero brake. Below 100 knots, we can dab wheel brake if needed. And below 50 knots, we can introduce uh, nosal steering. Right, so let's just show compensating here to get an angle of attack and get down to the correct 2.5 pitch. See, I'm diving down to uh, faster than I would normally to get my 2.5 degree pitch line on the first over to the runway. We're gonna go full flaps and we're going to leave the flaps out now. Uh, sorry, um, I'm in air, air brakes. Struggling to talk and do this at the same time. A path mark can now go on the threshold of the runway. Just a little fast. left at the very last minute just to reduce off throttle reduce our sink rate keep the nose in the air about 10 degrees or something at the moment we'll go a little higher if we need to I suppose start feeding more off stick we pretty much go to max stabilator deflection now for aero braking we can dab on the wheel brake as necessary a few rudder corrections I went a bit offside there line and those were steering on and that's it by means not perfect uh, my brake turn wasn't the best my base turn uh, I ended at 300 feet too high so I had to make that correction but otherwise it was okay the touchdown wasn't too bad what I found is that uh, or that line 2.5 line is pretty crucial to yeah the yeah, because uh, we got told off by Wags for doing the first version of this video because we were landing it like a Hornet because that's what we got used to, and you're absolutely right. So for a USAF plane, this 2.5 degree line is everything. If you do this 2.5 degree line, the landings just work every time perfectly. If you don't, if you come in like a Hornet, you just bang the plane every time and you bounce it. I uh, hope that's useful, and see you later.